Ryan Reese worked hard as the manager of a professional skateboard team, and he partied even harder. For 10 years, he traveled the wor world living the high life until he made an unexpected trip that almost took him out. From world-class partier to a man on a mission, Ryan Reese was living for himself until he almost died. One of our team riders found me and I wasn't responding. They thought I was like dead. Like I was on my way out to die. My heart was gonna stop. As co-founder of The Whosoevers, Ryan and his team focus on reaching students overwhelmed by broken homes, depression, anxiety, self-harm and suicide, empowering them with hope and helping them find their true purpose in Christ. Please welcome to the show, uh, Ryan Reese. Ryan, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> you, you obviously ran with a pretty wild crowd. How did you first get into the rave scene? Yeah, um, when the rave movement first started in Hollywood in the early 90s, uh, my friend just decided to take me out to one of those underground parties. Yeah. I went. It was so unique and uh, so different than anything that was out at that time, and I just dove right in and experienced that crazy birth of the rave movement in Los Angeles. Well, at the height of your career, you were the manager of a pro skateboard team. Yeah. What was life like at that point? Yeah, it was interesting because I was managing the number one skateboard team in the world, and I was also doing large-scale music festivals. So I'd be on tours with bands, um, getting them to wear our products. So we're working with the biggest rock and hip-hop bands on the planet, as well as touring with the number one skateboard team. So it was, I mean, <laughs> you have everything you ever wanted. You're, yeah. you're skating the most exclusive spots, surfing spots, seeing the whole world, traveling nine months out of the year. Yeah. But I was trying to numb this pain from a bad relationship when I was young. I went through a divorce. I got my, my wife pregnant three times. She aborted the kids, and I was trying to fill this empty void with drugs and alcohol to numb the pain in relationships and careers. So one side, I was living my dream, but I was like uh, the walkie dead. I was a dead man walking. I was, I was empty and- um, Well, what happened yeah. to you in Panama City? Well, basically what happened is in my, the last skateboard tour I was on, um, I did nine days of cocaine, Xanax and alcohol. And, nine days of cocaine. And, and alcohol and Xanax. Okay. And I OD'd for the third time in my life. And I already lost 16 to 17 friends to suicide and drug overdose at this point. Famous musicians, famous artists, right. uh, skate, professional skateboarders. And I just really didn't care if I lived or if I died. I remember that enemy Satan would give me thoughts of me Odin in a hotel room. So I thought my destiny was that. Wow. And that happened. I came out of it the next day. My parents prayed for me because they heard that that happened to me from a skateboard. Your par parents are Christians. My parents are Christians. My dad's actually a uh, pastor. Uh, Calvary Chapel of um, in Diamond Bar in Los Angeles. He, he was one of the guys that came out of the Jesus People Movement in Chuck sure. Smith's church. So he's, he's there. But, but you're not at this point. You're not there yet. No, I, I, I wanted nothing to do with Christianity. I didn't want nothing to do with ministry. I didn't want nothing to do with mm. anything with God. I wanted the lust of the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh. I wanted the things of the world. Mm. And, and you actually thought you would go out in a blaze and OD and that would be it. Yeah, I was totally deceived. Yeah. Um, in that, and that's exactly what happened. My parents heard about this encounter. They prayed. By God's grace, I came out of it. And uh, I, I took a plane uh, home, and I remember I, I actually stole the Bible from a hotel. It's called the Gideon Bible. Yeah. <laughs> stole the Bible. You know, that's one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, right? <laughs> but you know what? Stealing that Bible was the best decision of my life. Wow. Not only does it get me free Bibles now, but it, uh, <laughs> it changed my life because the Bible is the DNA of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it started transforming my life. I remember landing and I felt peace for the first time in my life in the airplane in Los Angeles. I went home. I woke up the next morning and I heard this small, still voice singing. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I haven't heard that song since I was in Sunday school when I was like in first I grade. Love that song. And that was the shows that in Psalms it says that, you know, the word of God never comes back void. Um, yeah. Boom. I knew God was real. Well, Ryan, how in the world did you wind up in the Garden of Gethsemane and what happened to you there? I was like, God, what are you going to do with my life? I do music festivals. I work with bands. I manage a skateboard team. Where do I fit into this whole God plan? Yeah. And I was in the Garden of Gethsemane. I went out there with the lead singer of POD, my homie. And uh, I was just in the garden. I said, God, I don't want my life anymore. I want your will to be done. Not my will, thy will be done. And I prayed and I said, God, if you will use my life at any capacity, then I'll follow you. Um, well, you just open the doors. If you want me to tell my story, then please contact me. Mm -hmm. 
and have someone contact me. And in Israel, the next day, I got a phone call from a pastor from Las Vegas that heard that I was saved. And he says, I want you to come share your testimony at my church. And literally, I was like, God, I was just joking. I, you know, I'm, I don't want to be on the stage. I, I build stages for people to perform. I don't want to like, go up and speak. <laughs> right. And I just stepped out by that simple step of faith. Like Peter stepping out of the boat. He didn't know that he'd be living the impossible, walking on water, unless he stepped out by faith. And yet the other disciples, the 12 or the 11, were scared to do anything. And you were in Israel for a gig? For I was there show? just to tour the Holy Land oh, to see what, what's tour. up with Jesus. <laughs> and okay. and uh, I ended up going and doing that speaking engagement. And that was the birth of the Whosoever's Movement without having any name. Right. So how long is that? You co-founded Whosoever's Movement. What is it and who are the Whosoever's? We co-founded co it um, 11 years ago with the lead singer of the band P.O.D. When we were in Israel, he says, I have this idea, a name called the Whosoever's. I see it like a worldwide movement. Now, what I do is I help build brands and, you know, all that back end stuff. So I got the name. We put it together and we started touring telling our testimonies after that speaking engagement in Vegas, which was done with the guitar player from Korn, lead singer from P.O.D., Lacey from Flyleaf, lead singer, and myself. And that birthed the movement. From there, we started doing music festivals. We started touring all over the world. Um, I do a radio show out of LA. It's like 110 stations from LA to New York City. A live talk show that people could call in. And now what we're doing is we're touring the public school system, middle schools and high schools around the world. You can probably relate then to you know Kanye West and his transformation and what he's going through. Yeah, interesting enough, I talked to my friend and he, uh, the other day, he was the one that actually uh, is the guy that pointed him to go to church and connect him with his pastor at church yeah. out in, in LA. And uh, yeah, we got to pray for Kanye because Hollywood and all that's a crazy place and there's a lot of yes men. He needs to get someone that's legit that can disciple him and um, help uh, him produce fruit yeah. in his life. But it's authentic and it's amazing. Well, Ryan, today you are married, you've got kids, and there's a whole other story. I wish we had more time to talk yeah. about that. But yeah. God bless you. Things are going great for you. We, we're so, uh, there, there's your beautiful family and well, your, I have your wife right there. I have triplet daughters. What? <laughs> yeah, because what got aborted, God ended up giving me back the two identical twins and a fraternal. Oh, and that's goodness. exactly what I lost in my previous marriage. So that's all God's grace. And I have a boy that's now uh, two years old. A modern day Job. Two months old. A modern day Job, the last chapter. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. What Thank an you. inspiring story.